Rigo. I'm 23 years old. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, and my passion is helping others using music. In 2007, I was injured with uh, what's called severe post-concussion syndrome. It was two illegal hits to the head from this opposing player. I was sitting on the bench laughing, crying. My emotions were all over the place. Uh, coaches were telling me to get back into the game and continue playing, but uh, I just knew something wasn't right and no one really took me seriously because they didn't understand what was going on with me because I looked like a crazy person all out of it. So after that game, I was rushed to the hospital. The hospital uh, diagnosed me wrong and what ended up saving my life was my pediatrician and found out that he could be suffering from these concussions and don't let him play uh, again because it turns out if I had gotten a third hit to the head, could have been deadly so and I was lucky to survive the two hits that I had but if I got in a third one it was be really really bad <laughs> so it took about um, a year and a half after I was diagnosed to get fully back to happy-go-lucky James I lost uh, all feeling in my mouth and face and couldn't really walk and talk people didn't understand concussions and that was the issue and you know what to do if you break an arm or or if you sprain an ankle, but what do you do if you get a brain injury? From that, I ended up using my severity of concussion to help other students and athletes learn about what concussions are and, and just get that awareness out there more. So I ended up contacting uh, a neurosurgeon who I was working with and a, a ex-WWE wrestler, and they came and spoke to my school, and I spoke as well, and I could barely talk, and I, you know, it really hit home to all the students because now they're seeing you know, this person who looks fine on the outside, but there was a whole bunch of stuff in the inside that they couldn't see. But now when you're up there talking and you're kind of a mess, speaking to everyone, it really hit home. And school had been telling me, you know, I should probably take a year off because they didn't think I'd be able to keep up with the curriculum. But I just continued to push through and, and kind of just work through my way. So while I was doing that and suffering from just kind of the daily activities of, of seeing how much I've changed, my mom wanted to kind of take my mind off it and she wanted to try music. My neighbor played guitar and uh, she hired him for about two weeks. He came to my house and he would show me just the chords and how to play and I, for some reason music just clicked. And I started making up all sorts of songs and because my memory was so bad I never really wrote down anything so I would just be able to make up songs right on the spot over and over again just because that was the only way I could remember is just, you know, like just wing it. The most important thing was seeing the impact that it had on others, um, especially my mom who was suffering from terminal cancer she just always got a, got a kick out of hearing new songs or, you know, make her laugh and all sorts of things by using my music. Got my boat shoes, I'm not scared. We can dance by the sea, have romance, you and me. Oh, baby, oh, baby. Cause, cause I got my boat shoes on when I wrote this song. And that's, that's what continued to push me to, to take it further. When everyone was saying, you know, you wouldn't be able to do this, that pushed me harder to, to be able to do that. Graduated high school with honors and went to college, went to James Madison University, and that was a blast. And from that, the whole music side of things really started taking off. I close my eyes and let it fall down. You've been scared and you're overwhelmed. Into deep and you need some help. 
from performing all over campus. To this organization that I started called Lad in a Battle, and that's what I ended up calling myself as like a stage name, and just this Lad in a Battle. When I first started, it was in high school, and it originally started as Lad stood for Living Above Alcohol and Drugs. I was just kind of sick of seeing all the, the, the students and, and people just becoming typical teenagers that everyone has these stereotypes of just going out and drinking every night and doing all these things, getting in trouble. So what I wanted to do was create a little group within my community that we could do things uh, besides that and just have adventures and have fun. And it worked. It started out small, you know, with a couple a couple other students who just enjoyed doing stuff. We'd go rock climbing to bowling. And I used the stage as a type of forum where I can make a difference because it really hits home with the music. But then when you can talk and, and relate to students, it really did have a positive impact. Throughout school, I ended up having this whole group and I sold all these t-shirts, these Latin of Battle t-shirts. The whole catch was every time you wear the t-shirt, you have to do some type of good deed and then you post it on Facebook, and, and it had all these people starting taking all these good deed photos in their shirts, whether it was holding the door for elderly people to uh, tutoring students, and it was just fantastic to see all these people that felt like they belonged to something bigger than themselves, and that, that was the whole point. All the t-shirt sales went for Make-A-Wish Foundation, but my goal was $6,000, which is how much it cost to raise one wish. Long story short, raised the $6,000, got to go and surprise this little girl named Ashlyn, and, and her wish was to go to uh, Disney World Hawaii. So I made it happen and I surprised her in her third grade class. So you walk in this classroom, we had all decorated with everything and, and the kids went absolutely nuts. My mom recently passed, um, it's been about a year. And uh, when she passed, I had, I had all these big goals and dreams that we had always talked about together um, to making happen. And when she did pass, I, I ended up just, the first thing I did was wrote a list of all the things that I wanted to do with her and, and get done and all the things that she believed in me to do and I wrote them all down and I just figured I wanted to replace these negative images and memories that I had of, of her death with this positive adventure that she'd always wanted me to go on and, and kind of experience life and still having her presence there with me. The first thing on the list was I had always, I've always wanted to go to Montana and that was, um, she, we'd always talked about going to Montana to film a music video, just something simple as that. So I'm going to Montana Woo! to watch the sun go Montana. down. I'm gonna watch openness and loneliness and beauty where it's found. I said I need to be free. I said I need to just breathe. No one else would be. I'm going to Montana to watch the sun go down. I need to watch bison graze their homeland. Where just love is found I said I need to believe And I need to just breathe That air Montana breathes for me So I continue to, to take this list and continue to cross off goals and, and, and life lessons that I want to learn and experience and every time I, I do one of those goals um, and complete one of them, I do feel that, that presence again and that warmth and that's what it's about. I always had a thing for doodling. I never had any lessons or anything. I just love to draw cartoons and characters and just why I love drawing is because you can, you have a blank canvas and then you can just make whatever you want. You picture it in your head and you make it happen. Another item on the list that I had written down that my mom and I had always talked about was using my drawings to make a concussion comic. That was the next step, and I just made it happen, printed it all out. I want to get it into all the school systems, so that way it just, it, it's fixing this problem, which is, you know, there's there's not enough unique ways that are, that are teaching the youth, and that's why I want to get um, these pamphlets that I made that they fold out, and you have the whole signs and symptoms of all the pictures, and it's all using doodles and, and cool characters, this little concussion brain guy who gets concussed and uh, it'd be ideal to get it into different school systems, you know, have it you know, in the locker rooms posted up and have it in the school nurses' offices. Like, I would love to, you know, use that talent of drawing and, and, and 
to to then take it to other diseases to other issues and just making a big topic into a quick thing <laughs> using comics and drawings that will catch your attention just so hopefully spark a spark a little nerve that it will make you remember you know because if someone did get a concussion then they remember oh yeah well that that drawing of that guy feeling in a fog yeah that's one of the symptoms they'll hey man you know maybe you should sit out you know and, or you could do something for head lice, something easy, because I took this whole broad topic of concussions, condensed it into just like a, like a six-page pamphlet, and then boom. <laughs> you know, those are easily distributed, those are easily out there, and if they're available, it can really help someone. You know, when I go speaking at the different schools, you know, I go to the athletic director's office and talk to them and, get, and try to get them involved. So the feedback's been really positive so far, so it's just exciting, it's just needing some more funding <laughs> to, to help really take it off. The possibilities are limitless, you know, you can make it into a cartoon, you can do a whole series. By having um, this concussion comic, it's just a different way to get their attention and uh, to fixing a problem and hopefully saving someone's life.